Topic of this video is, can you work as an engineer without a degree? This may not seem totally relevant, but there's some insights as to why this is possible because you're probably like, what the hell? Like, how do you go and design a product and sign off on something if you don't have the, the technical knowledge? What ends up happening from what I've seen is that someone will go to school, usually go to school for a tech degree, let's say instrumentation. They work their way up to the point where they've got so much technical knowledge that they start doing engineering work. That's, that's, that's pretty much it. You actually don't need a degree to do engineering work. Now to sign off on something is a little different. You need to have a PNG. And as far as I know, the majority of places require you to get a PNG, you're required to have an accredited degree. The reason that some people end up going down this route, and I don't think it's super common, but the reason that some people do it is because they, they, just, they just don't want to go to universities, right? And there's good reason for that. And you know what, Let, here, let's, let's talk about universities for a sec. To me, the purpose of a university is to adequately prepare your students for the workforce. And they don't always do that. These students, they, they, they don't know how to present themselves to an employer. And universities, for the tuition that you're paying, you'd expect them to do that. Now, there are obviously good things about universities. I mean, you learn the, the technical knowledge that you need to learn. You do labs. You can meet a lot of people. Um, it's it's kind of... You know, it's hard for me to imagine, let's say designing, a, uh, I don't know, a jet engine, because I work with, I work in aerospace, J design a jet engine without taking, having taken like thermodynamics. You can learn on the job and damn, I learned things that, that I, I didn't take in school. Um, but they, like, I still have the, the fundamental knowledge. I can learn it quickly because I, I've taken those concepts and I can just sort of extrapolate them. This is from a Reddit forum. Do you think you need an engineering degree to be considered an engineer? Maybe not strictly required, but in Canada without one, you will need to pass a metric shit ton of qualifying exams to get a PNG membership. A lot of provinces, you actually can't. You have to have an accredited degree. I know someone who's a self-taught engineer who got his PE. That's a legitimate path. It wasn't easy, but it is valid and allowed. I have a degree myself and think that this is the best route to go down, but I disagree with people saying you must have a degree to become an engineer. I think another good thing about, you know, graduating from engineering school is that it shows people that you can do work you can do this type of problem solving work it does show employers some sort of potential i've had two colleagues that became engineers by working their way up from technician to engineer also three that tried and failed to work their way up. i'm pretty sure neither company would invite someone without a degree to come and talk without some very good recommendations and credentials though so switching jobs might be problematic i've met some amazing people with no degree but loads of experience who do great engineering but they're limited to interpolation from experience and cannot typically extrapolate. That's kind of what I was getting here. I'll give you guys an example. Right now, what, what I've been what I've been doing at work lately is I'm designing a um a take it up. I'm doing a lot of CAD modeling and figuring out okay, what size duct do we need? What kind of what what power supplies? What air supplies? This part's going to be welded. This part's going to be um you know clamped on, etc. And really, anyone could do this. But when it comes to, okay, now we gotta we gotta do some stress analysis. We gotta figure out what kind of pressures that this these ducts can withstand. We gotta do some hoop stress, that kind of stuff. That falls into the engineering category. It's something where you'll you'll need to be working with engineers. I don't think I'd ever trust someone who doesn't have a college degree to do any advanced calculations involving public safety, average project management stuff that a lot of my engineer friends can do. Sure, an experience in smart tech can handle that. And I feel okay working on them if they don't argue with my technical decisions. I'm a mechanical engineer and my boss does not have a degree in engineering. He's worked his way up from the shop floor to the head of the engineering department through decades of experience. And I think that's 100% valid. And I think it is too. If you've if you've gained enough trust in your company that they they put you in that position, then that, that's awesome. No, I don't think there should be non-degree engineers. It's really the employer's prerogative to determine titles. However, there's a matter of standards and accountability. In practice, engineering titles may be a matter of semantics, but they matter because it's a company with a certain level of expectation, a more suitable title for a self-taught engineer or non-degree engineer with a lot of experience as an engineering technician. Quite simply, university, it just isn't for everyone. I work with a lot of guys who I don't think would suit university, but they're still perfectly capable engineers. The one thing that I think a lot of them are missing, however, is the ability to napkin math a problem. People with engineering degrees, even if they don't know the calculations off the top of their head, at least know where to find the information and how to apply it. These guys are more the camp of call the manufacturer, and if that fails, just eyeball it. If you're 
And and look, like techs are like we learn a lot from techs at our job. Do we look at them for like, you know, learning the conceptual stuff? Not usually. I don't technically need a degree for my role, but I wouldn't be able to do without the job and the skills having learned from a degree. At the moment, I'm trying to train some other engineers in my field and none of them have a relevant engineering degree. Without those key bits of background knowledge, I find I'm having to teach otherwise senior engineers things like Ohm's Law and other secondary school level things. Yeah, that's not good. There's no way a senior engineer does know Ohm's Law. Yeah, I would imagine so. <laughs> I've seen operators work their way up to being an engineer, but that typically takes 10 plus years experience and staying at the same company for 10 years. You almost have to stay with the same guys and build trust in management to to let you do this work. If, if you went to another company and you worked for 10 years, but you don't have a, a degree in engineering, I doubt that they would just be like, yeah, you could come and work as an engineer for us. Kind of seems unlikely. I recently promoted one of my techs to be an engineer. He has no degree, but has proven to me that he has the skills that he has learned and the experience gained more than qualified to do the engineering work I need him to. Of course not. An engineer is somebody who does engineering. Steve Wozniak does not didn't get his degree until 1987. Burrell Smith was self-taught too. I mean, Elon Musk is a self-taught engineer. He's got a physics degree, which really helps. Yes, a degree is an expensive piece of paper, but it is also certifiable proof that you are capable of learning and understanding complex ideas. I see unqualified people, engineers in name only, who aren't capable of safely or effectively executing the work they've been entrusted with. Are there professionals with engineering abilities? Yes. Does that mean I should call them an engineer? No. To do so is inauthentic, misleading, and potentially dangerous. I refuse to personally conform to the idea that any capable professional can achieve XYZ engineering title. There is something about graduating from an accredited program and then getting your accredited designation to show people that, yeah, I, I, I'm responsible. Like I'm, I'm responsible if something goes wrong, right? We do need professional engineers. Absolutely. Absolutely. There has to be a governing body that, um, you know, regulates what an, a professional engineer is and who's qualified to, to call themselves a professional engineer and to sign off on, on products uh, and, and you know parts and, and, and services and, and all that stuff and build bridges and roads and absolutely. It would be difficult to get started without one, but once you have a few jobs under your belt, that would be the things that employers look for. Uh, even still, I've heard of some companies that will only hire if you have an accredited degree. I always knew I wanted to be an engineer, but I was horrible, uh, horrible in formal education and I learned technical subjects by experimentation. I did eventually get degrees because I wanted to switch fields and that is almost as difficult as starting out. I'm very happy that I understand some of the mathematics. You're right, but not having an official title dilutes wages when anyone can call themselves an engineer. Our salaries seriously suck in UK compared to other parts of the world. I've heard this from the UK. I'm wondering why it's... Uh, it's so shite there. I couldn't care less. I hired two engineers recently without degrees. Why? They can do free body diagrams, TS cycle diagrams, come up with two to three approaches to my dumb technical <laughs> interview questions. The degreed candidates to an, an individual could not. This is embarrassing for Colorado State University, University of Colorado and Colorado School of Mines, but their programs can't deliver. I'm disgusted. It's a waste of my time. The college programs are, are so already diluted by the ranks of their own product. That's a good point. When new college grads want on the team and they can't even do the things they allegedly were taught for four to five years at an ABET accredited program, I lose faith in the degree pretty fast. I'd love to hear of degree programs that are a reasonable measure of preparation for early career candidates. This is a problem with universities, right? They're, they're taking in more and more engineering students. The tuition is, going, is getting higher and higher. The quality of the program is not the same. What they're churning out is not improving. It's not enough anymore to just say that you graduated from an accredited university. Uh, apprenticeships need to be mandatory. There needs to be more integration with online learning. You, we, you've seen some of the, the horror stories that people have had. Uh, have, have transitioning to online this year. You have to utilize it properly. So go to go to um, an, an accredited engineering school. It doesn't have to be an expensive one. Take the co-op program. Make sure that they have a co-op program. Figure out what industry you want to be in within your discipline and focus on that and get internships in, the, in that area. And, you know, you should be all right. That was, that was pretty, uh, that was an interesting topic. I learned a lot reading these comments as well. I think, um, it gave you guys some insights, hopefully, into why people go down this route and why employers like to hire guys with a tech background a lot of the time, right? It's because of their experience and their attitude, okay? 
we'll focus on these two things and and you should be all right please uh subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and uh, let me know, let me know what you guys thought of the video i'm curious what the comments look like on this and i'd love to hear from people who have actually went down this path make sure again to smash that like button and smash that subscribe button i'll see you next time the sky the sky is falling